All right, this is the coach's corner. It's Coach Jimmy, Coach Glitter, right? Okay, so Tiff, this is what I want to know. Yeah. There's a bunch of entrepreneurs out there that are, they're hustling for likes, uh -huh. they're hustling for followers, they're hustling for popularity, they're trying to get their YouTube show up and running. What do you want to say to those people if that's all they're doing? Oh my gosh, it is about such a bigger game. It's about so much more than that. I truly believe that the people who succeed and actually create a real business and not just, hello, look at all my hearts, look at all my comments. It fires me up because I'm like, you don't have a freaking business. Okay. And so people know you, and I know you as a brand new. We go way back. How many years have we known each other now? Probably like six, seven six, years. Six, seven years, right? So initially, I came to you to learn brand. I literally learned how to. I tell people I know how to dress because of you. Like visual branding, because I started off as a makeup artist and a wardrobe stylist, right. and, and and then a set designer. So I came from a completely different space. I was not online, right. but we had mutual friends that I was styling, and sure. like help me with my visual branding. And the first time I met you, I think I said, you're so much younger in person because your profile picture, honestly, <laughs> that is true. I was like, I thought you're an older man. <laughs> and so, and, and I just told you before this interview, <laughs> I'm turning 41 this year and I don't think I look like that. No. But so, and I, I, I it didn't represent that to you. you. Yes. It didn't represent who you are. And so I started off with what I knew and because I didn't want to do belly to belly one on one. Sure. And I was working with these high level entrepreneurs, some of the biggest names in the online marketing Yep. space also in film and television and commercial and I didn't know what the heck I could bring to the online space like why would anybody need any of that right until I figured out it's right in front of my face which is something I keep telling you because you have so much freaking potential right in front of your face okay. like on your nose right okay so we're talking about this and how we're normally and I'm gonna use my I'm gonna be super vulnerable with the audience right now that I call you out because I got called out just a second ago in a private conversation I'm like hey I've been seeing you in person in a year and a half and she's years. like now I'm gonna kick you in the crotch and we're gonna talk about this now but this is a true friend because you need these people in your life <laughs> So when you're so close to something, oh, yeah. so for, let's just talk about this. For me, it's storytelling, mm -hmm. right? Even like, Jimmy, I've been telling you forever, you gotta launch that storytelling piece. Yeah. What was it for you being so close to what you already did with visual branding, mm -hmm. how did you make that transition from, I don't know, I just do this, to this is how I'm gonna teach somebody else to do something that kinda came to you naturally, or you've been doing it so long, you were too close to it. I was too close to it and I thought, why would people who don't know me, it's totally imposter syndrome. Right. Even though I worked with all these fancy people, it was totally imposter syndrome, even for me, even for you okay. right now. And still. explain what you mean by that. That you don't think you're good enough to serve people who in the world wide web, right. on, on Instagram, on Facebook, strangers. Okay. That don't know you because I, you know, I felt like Listen, I'll call myself out. I was a walking resume. Mm -hmm. I was a walking resume. I was a walking reel. I was all the, but I worked on this show and I worked with this person. Right. And if people didn't know who I was, I was like, why, the, why right. the heck would they pay me to do that? And so when I got to the online space, it freaked me out and I froze for a really, really long time. Okay. But it was having the right mentors, the right coaches, sure. people who saw your gifts before you even recognized, before you even dared to recognize it in yourself. That's what I needed. I already had it all completely within myself. The tech, how to create a course, the yeah. how-tos, the marketing, the advertising, all those things, that is 2%. Right. That's not what's holding you back. It's you and everybody else that's not literally, you're literally bearing your gifts. Okay, and, and I completely, so you're, so for you it was it was visual branding. It was helping. Started with that. With, it and started it's with that. And it's evolved, right? So for me, if it's storytelling. Yes. How do you? It do, is. By it's, the way. it's completely story. It's storytelling yeah. and. So this thing that just comes naturally to me, what was that step for you to go, okay, how does how does what I do naturally become 12 modules, become yes. or whatever it is. the course, whatever the course is, uh -huh. what was that transition like for you? Okay, so we have a mutual friend, our mutual coach, James Woodmore, and I always give credit where credit is due. James is great. You have to screw the how for now. You're using that as an excuse, I did that too. Right. You're using that as your excuse to not move forward and even take that first baby step. We all have to set our ego aside and allow ourselves to be a beginner, allow ourselves to just start, be messy, knowing that 
nothing that we do is set in stone. So what I did when I, whether it's a course or a coaching group or teaching anybody else to duplicate, replicate sure. what it is that you know that's so easy for you. Yes, you need a system. Sure. Yes, you have to break it down. And you just, it's literally, Jamie, when was the last time you actually sat down and really reverse engineer how you do what you do? There is a system to it, whether you recognize it or not. Right. That's step one. And then you gotta have some other human beings, a beta test. What I see so many people do, and I'm like, I wanna shake them by the shoulders, is that they spend so much time and money, and they literally put so much of their heart and their soul into creating a course that oftentimes, most of the time, nobody needs or wants. Right. Because they created it inside of a vacuum. Gotcha. So the beta test. They're gonna tell you. They're gonna tell you. Right. And you're co-creating together. So like that that stress we put on ourselves is completely alleviated. Gotcha. I mean, that's what Kickstarter is, right? Right, exactly. Before you create the thing, you have people, it's vetting the process. Right, they're gonna it's tell you, research. are you interested in this? Yeah, and if nobody wants to buy, right. then you go back to the drawing board. And it could be that the product is amazing, but maybe it's your pitch. But even before you get there, a beta, just a beta group, we're talking five, 10, 15 people get them started. I did two beta tests. Right. And that's where you take these people who are going to go through the process of creation for you and every single person that does this, they end up creating a better product that is oftentimes so dang different than what they thought it was going to be. Right. And so like for me, that's where I feel like I'm good. Like if I got down, if we sat down and I said, here, tell me your story. Or if somebody's like, well, my story is, here's my childhood story, but here's my business. And I don't know how these two relate. Right. I can put those together for people super quick. Right, and that's gonna be a big chunk of it, but what about the people like me who couldn't get on the stage, who couldn't get in front of the video, who would refuse to do that for years and right. held myself back? So there's gonna be that whole fear factor too, which I'm predicting as a friend looking out, not being, I'm the introvert, you're the extrovert. Right. I'm more, I mean, I'm not shy, I'm getting better, but I've never been shy, I'm right. just more reserved. Sure. I've learned to create the energy when I need to get on stage, right. like I'm about to in 30 minutes, yeah. or, like how crazy is it that you knew me from six, seven years ago and now I'm speaking on stage. Yeah, it's Now all I do is video. Yes. Oh my gosh. Anything is possible. Right, you went from behind the camera to in front the of the camera. I was behind the camera. I did, right. never wanted to be in front of the camera. I, I always tell people that it's a little bit like when Beyonce talks about how she had to create Sasha Fierce. Yes. Have you ever heard this? Like yes. her other personality, I feel like yeah. There, there's a bit of that with you, like everybody this, uh, has that right. though. Yeah. And the thing is, you have to tap into your energy. You have to tap into your high energy vibe. You have to tap into kind of your own version of Sasha Fierce. Yeah. Your second persona. Sure. And it's not that you're a different person, but it's just knowing that we have and we're allowed to have different sides of ourselves. Sure. But that's a that for me that would be the missing piece for you if you only led with let's just talk about which story you share, sure. which is what so many people do. And the thing is that when you work with the beta test or one or two of them, right. they're going to tell you what works and they're helping you because they are literally taking your ideas, taking it from theory and creating the actual reality. Sure. How does something work in theory? And what really happens right. in reality? And so that's so zero pressure for you. Sure. Well, and then it, like, let's say in my situation, storytelling for what purpose? Because so if you gotta right. go start with the end in mind and then we're gonna build this thing on the, that's to the way, sell. that's where my brain goes. Why like, are we online? It's like, why do you wanna tell a story? Oh, is it to sell a product? Is it to promote yourself? Is it to All like, of it. You need to know that because right. then that depends on which story you pick. Yeah. Where's the journey? Right. Where are we going with the four parts? So, right. Absolutely. And a lot of it, you know, we're going back to your original question of, yes, we need to build audiences, yes. but we need to build audiences with an end purpose. Yeah, sure. Even if that vision is super fuzzy, and all of us have had multiple iterations of our business. Because as human beings, we don't start off at the second we graduate from high school doing the same job when we're 18 to we're both in our 40s and yes. we should be proud. Yeah, hey. But you know what? I've done so many different things right. and we're constantly in the search of our purpose, in the search of our passions. Right. Our passions constantly change. And so why do people get so stuck on having everything perfect when we already have so much evidence that got us to where we are today that we did things without knowing everything. We did things before the, all the ducks were in a row. Right. I always say my ducks weren't even born yet. <laughs> just and eggs. that's They're just eggs. If that, right. and so let yourself be a beginner. Let yourself create something from scratch and let it evolve and then take off that pressure knowing that it's not about the likes and the comments. You could be super popular, but you're not gonna be profitable. Right. You're 
I mean, I, I speak directly, like in the beginning, I just wanted to talk to anybody that would give me likes and hearts and comments. Right. And then I realized, because it felt good. And then I was like, okay, ego, set yourself aside. Right. And I recognize there's a big difference between being an actual business owner, yeah. being a CEO, whether it's in the digital space, brick and mortar, or a mix of the two. Because now there's really, there's no more hard distinctions between online and offline. Right. That we're all online. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. And so showing up, being the face of your brand, being a personal brand. You gotta show up yeah. and you gotta have a purpose behind it. And so whether it's what I do, you know, with my course Lights Camera Brandy, I'm teaching people how to use live video to show up as their personal brand. You're going to teach people how to use their story in order to create a bigger audience of the right people, not just for popularity, but because it's leading them to that to get that faster know, like, and trust factor. Okay. Because ultimately we are promoting what it is that we have to offer, but we lead with service. And that has nothing to do with being popular. Damn, mic drop. Um. <laughs> okay, so this is what happens when you ask a friend to be on your show, she calls you out. So here's your opportunity. Yeah. I put together a beta test for teaching you how to tell your story. Yes. Would you be interested? Because and if so, story sells. I need you to leave a comment below let me know how to get a hold of you, and let's do this beta test. Let's do it. You can find me everywhere online at coachglitter.com or at coachglitter, basically on Facebook and Instagram. Damn, I, this is not where I thought this interview was gonna go, but <laughs> there well, it we is. Went there. Subscribe, like, and we'll see you next time.